Hi, family. Welcome to another broadcast of You Are Enough. Are you excited for where you're going? I am so excited for where you're going, family. I love y'all so much. I want to thank you so much, family, for all y'all support that you give our channel. I am so elated. Y'all have no idea how much you mean to me. I want to let you know that you are going to do something so extraordinary in your bloodline. God has chose you to do something so good and so amazing, and it's going to exceed your expectations. You were not afraid to cut the enemy off, and you're going to get so many doors of opportunity to prove a lot of people wrong. You cut the enemy out. I mean, you had enough courage, you had enough strength to cut the enemy out. And whenever you get enough courage to do what is so difficult for you to do, this is when God is going to open that window of heaven up. God is going to open that window up in heaven. And he's going to pour so many blessings down upon his people in this season. Because you have come to the conclusion that it's either them or me. Whenever you come to that conclusion that it's either them or me. It's time for me to make myself happy. It's time for me to fulfill my own dreams instead of pouring in a cup with the bottom not there. God said, let me pour down some more favor upon my people. God is going to favor you. Some of you have been hated for so long. Some of you have been hated for things that just don't even make sense to the natural mind of people. And the more you hate it, the more you're going to be blessed. Let me tell you something about favor. Favor is going to give you opportunities that people say you could never have. Favor is going to give you access to things and to people and to environments and communities and businesses and finances and wealth that you didn't think you could access. God has given you keys. God has given you doors. God has given you a window of opportunity. A window of opportunity is, is getting ready to come to you. And why is this window of opportunity getting ready to come for you? Because you had enough nerves to cut people out. You had enough nerves to cut the devil off. You had enough guts to cut the devil off. This is why people tried you so much. This is why people tried your patience. Some people tried your patience. Some people tried you as an individual family just because of your niceness just because of your warm heart, just because of your generosity, just because you are a nurturing person. They thought your meekness was a sign of weakness. See, this is how low vibrational people are in their thinking process. But you know what this has taught you? This has taught you how to be more logical in your thinking. This has taught you how to be led by your spirit and not just by your heart, not just by your emotions. People thought they will always be able to treat you bad. People thought they will always be able, family, to pick you up and put you down and play you like you were a piece on a game board. But people have realized you are the game, and you're teaching people how to win the game in life. You are, you are teaching people how to literally do life. You cut so many people out of your life, you cut the devil out. And the devil is running around rampant, scratching his head. You have people scratching their head, trying to figure out how in the world you had enough courage to cut me out. Because God healed you and God gave you revelation on things. And God gave you revelation on people. And you made a determination. You made a decision that it's either you or me. You made a decision that it was either these people or me. You made a decision that it was my peace and my sanity or yours. And when you chose you. You chose yourself. Now your life is going to grow. Now your life is going to soar. I am telling you people, your life is going to grow. Your life is going to soar because you had enough courage to cut the devil out of your life. You had enough courage where you incorporated certain people in your life. A lot of people thought they were entitled to you. A lot of your own flesh and blood thought they were entitled to you. You're putting in the hard work. You're doing all these hard things and you got all these silly minded people around your life thinking that they are entitled to your breakthroughs and that they're entitled to your blessing that they're entitled to your miracles they're not entitled to anything that god give you they're not and don't let people make you feel guilty in this season of your life about what you're getting ready to receive because everybody does not deserve to sit at your table everybody does not deserve to sit their cushion in your chair 
A lot of people don't deserve to walk beside your family of God, but you know some people thought they were going to walk beside you anyway. You know how we used to say in church a long time ago, anyhow, God is going to bless me anyhow. No, he's not going to bless any of us anyhow. God is going to bless us according to the obedience that we have going on. This is what God is going to do. God is going to bless you accordingly. So govern yourself accordingly in this time. Govern yourself accordingly in this hour. You had the courage to cut people out. I'm glad and I'm happy for you. Will you have setbacks and will you have delays? You will at some point because you, had a, you have an enemy and the enemy is upset with you. The enemy don't like it that you cut them off. I mean, you cut them off without notice. You cut people off without notice. And now people think that it's going to be a day coming that you're going to revise that relationship. You're going to reconcile that relationship. You're not going to reconcile anything with the devil. You're not. You cut people out and that's where they're going to stay, out. And when you cut out people that don't belong in your life, God is going to let people come in. The right people are going to come into your life. They are. You're in a season where you're going to get so much for what the devil took from you, family. You're in a place in your life right now that you're going to see your life take off. Your, your life is going to take off. I mean, your, your life is literally going to skyrocket. It is. You're getting ready to get a boost. God is getting ready to give you a spiritual boost because you are doing what is so difficult for you. It, it's, it's been difficult for so many of you to cut people out of your life that you've been, you, you've been in covenant relation with for so long. But you got to do what's difficult. You got to do what's hard. You want the change? So do what is difficult. Pray your way through. Pray. Nobody said it would be easy. God didn't promise us that this journey would be easy. He never promised us that. So don't think this is going to be easy. And if it's difficult for you to cut people off that bit, that's been in your life for so long, that's normal, family. That is so normal. You cut the devil out. I mean, you cut people out without a notice. You didn't give people a one-day notice, a three-day notice. You didn't give people a 24-hour notice. You cut people out. And that is the best thing you could have done for yourself. This is the best thing you could do for your own sanity. You know, you had some people in your life, family, that were just tugging at your sanity, tugging at your peace. You were around certain people and they would just agitate your spirit. You don't know why you, your emotions are up and down. Your, your emotions was like on a roller coaster. You were up this minute, down one minute. I've been like that family of God. And thank God I have people in my life that'll check me. You know, we, when you have a real friend, they... They're not intimidated by you. They'll check you. You can't have people in your life that are afraid to check you spiritually the right way. And you can't be so timid that people can't tell you anything to correct you. That's where criticism comes from. That prefix of the word criticism, that means to critique. Not to criticize in a manner of to bring you down. No, to critique you. To help you be a better person. God said we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free. Excuse me. The truth that you hear, it may be tough to hear, but that truth that you hear and you take heed to, not just to hear with your physical ear, you got to take heed to what you hear so it can change. You cut people out. You hear me, family? And you keep doing that. You keep being led and letting God lead you who to cut out of your life because he's going to show you. God is going to show you who to cut out. He's going to tell you why. He's going to show you why. And it's going to become easier for you. And, and why it's going to become easier for you? Because the more you see your life grow and the more you see your life flourish, the more you can see sun shining in your life, you're going to feel good about doing what is difficult. You're not going to let your heart lead you. You know, you can't let your heart lead you because your heart may lead you in a bad place. You know, your heart will cause you to stay in things that, you shouldn't be staying in. That's one thing about sin. You know, sin will cause you to get tied up in a mess that you don't have any business in. And sin will cause you to stay longer in a mess that you don't have no business in. Have you ever been in that family? I have, thank God, that we learn. And when we learn, we do better. When we know better, we, we do better. And when you know better, you do better. That means the lessons that God is putting before you, you are learning. People are being taught by you. You're teaching people valuable lessons about life and how to treat people. These people thought you didn't have the guts to cut them out of your life. People thought you needed them. No, you never needed them. You chose them. Maybe you wanted 
these people around in your life, but you never needed them. You didn't need them for anything. They got it all twisted. A lot of these people's life are miscombobulated at this point. And now they're having an aha moment. Now a lot of people in your life are having epiphanies. That I played too many games. They waited too long to do the right thing by you. That's their loss and it's your gain. And that's how you got to look at life, family. You're not being mean. You're not being ugly. You're not being nasty. We are here to do life. And God gave us a shot down here to do it. You have an assignment and you have to meet your assignment. You have to. And the enemy doesn't want you to meet it. So what does he do? He's going to bring you distractions. He's going to bring you people that shouldn't be in your life. He'll cause you to make a decision to live somewhere that God didn't call you to live. He'll cause you to make a decision to take somebody back that God didn't tell you to take back. The devil will cause so many distractions. You know what? The enemy will even cause you to be overly busy doing the right thing so that you cannot do the thing that God wants you to do. You cut people out of your life, and that is the best thing you could have done because they were not beneficial to your life. Not one of these people that left your life was beneficial. Not one of these people that God led you to cut out of your life was beneficial to where you're going. You can't take everybody with you. If God told you to leave Lot behind, you leave Lot behind. It doesn't matter how close that bond is. It doesn't matter how much you want to take people with you. Do not take one person with you in this next season that God did not grant you to take. Don't do it, family. Don't do it. You're going to regret it because it's going to cause you so many problems. It's going to cause you so many delays. It's going to bring you so many unnecessary chaotic experiences that you don't have to have. But we learn and we grow. Thank God you had enough nerve and had enough strength and enough courage to cut the devil out of your life. Thank God. Because the devil came to kill, steal, and destroy your life. God said he came that you, ha that you will have life and have it in abundance. John 10.10. 10. I love you, family. Thank you for what you do daily on our channel. Remember, you are more than enough. You are enough. You don't have to try to be anything to make somebody love you or to be wanted. You are enough just as you are. Affirm that. I am enough. I am enough. Whenever you know that, whenever you know that, you know that you know that you are enough. You will never tolerate toxicity from anybody. You will not tolerate one person coming into your life trying to draw all life out of you. You won't tolerate people in your life to mistreat you. God didn't call you to do that. You don't have to accept anybody's mistreatment of you. You don't have to do that, family. And you do it if you're in that situation because you were broken. You were abandoned. You were left. You were dropped, just like Mephibosheth. You were dropped. People carried you. Some people carried you, just like that nanny carried Mephibosheth. Glory to God. But that nanny felt trouble. She knew trouble was coming. And she picked up Mephibosheth. And she was running. And she dropped that child. And from that day forward, Mephibosheth was crippled. A lot of people in your life crippled you. Your mother crippled you. Your father crippled you. Crippled you. Your biological kin people crippled you. Some people in ministries have dropped you. These people have crippled you. But God is going to cause a king. God is going to cause an angelic host to come and to pick you up and to carry you and to sit you at the master's table where you belong. You are a king of the most high God. You are sons and daughters of the most high God. And don't you allow life to treat you less than that. Don't you allow one person to come into your life to treat you less than that. You don't have to take it. You got to trust God when it gets hard. You don't need it. You know, sometimes you may be going through lack in your life. And you think you need that person because what they provide that you don't have. Your test. Your test right now, if you're in that situation, is will you trust God or will you trust the arm of flesh? Don't lean on the arm of flesh. You trust God in that situation because God is your provider. Thank God you cut the devil off. I love you. We'll talk later if it's God's will today. Don't forget to like the video, share, and subscribe. Keep liking that video, family, because it's going to help the algorithm of our channel. Hopefully today, before today ends, I pray if I get that spiritual release because my spirit is jumping, I want to come in and do a live for you. 
I want to come in and pray over you. I want to come in and speak life over your dead situation. All those barren places that are giving you some problems where you cannot produce. We call those things back to life. We call those things better than what they were before. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you is already condemned. Already. You are a winner and everybody attached to you is going to win. There's no way. There is no other place you're going but up from here. You're going from the pit to the palace. You're going from the wilderness. You're going from the garden of Gethsemane. You're going from bondage to a place of liberation. You're going to a place that is going to flow. You're going to a place where you're going to grow. You're going to a place where you're going to excel. You stay hooked up to God. On this channel, you want to grow. You want to be the greatest version of yourself that God said you can be. You stay hooked up to this channel. Because here on this channel, we are going to talk about everything that possibly we as God's kids have to go through with. While we are here in this present moment. And we're going to respond the way God wants us to respond. Keep love in your heart. Keep forgiveness in your heart. Because forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is not for the other person. It's not about if they deserve it. It's, you don't deserve to walk around burdened about what was done to you. When you release the enemy, God is going to release what in his hands to you. Whenever you release what you need to release... God is going to release what he has for you. God has a blessing with your name on it. And I want you to just claim it. I want you to be in a position where you can receive. Things are going to come to you effortlessly. Things are going to come to you easily. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Meditate on things that are good and just and holy and of a good report. All things going to work together for your good. To those of you who are called according to God's purpose, the bad is going to work for your good. The pain is going to work for your good. The suffering is going to work for your good. The heartbreak, heartbreak, the rejection, the trauma, all of these things, the delays, the distractions, all of these things are going to work together for your good. God is setting things in motion for you. And God is getting ready to pull back the curtain of your life to present you to the world. And people are going to wonder who are you and where have you been. You've been in a season of waiting for God to reveal you to the true sons and daughters of the earth. This is Nikki. It's been a pleasure to come back into your home. You are enough. And thank you for tuning in to another broadcast of You Are Enough. This is our main focus. You are enough. You are more than enough. God bless you. Love you. Talk later.